Hi, it's Sherry from A Quilting Life, and today I'm here to show you how to make my patchwork Christmas stocking. I have been wanting to make a patchwork Christmas stocking with my squares on point for quite some time, and uh, the method that I use is super simple, so it will actually apply to any kind of stocking and actually any kind of size that you might want to make. So let's just jump right in and I'll show you how to get started. Just one thing before you get started, there is a PDF stocking template that you can download for free on my blog. So if you want to stop the video and go download that, if you're going to be sewing along, you can do that now. There is a link in the description below. Okay, we're going to get started, but first I wanted to show you just a couple of things. The, this is the stocking that I'm going to kind of walk you through today. It's super fun and cute, but I did want to show you these three. This is actually from a tutorial I did with Fat Quarter Shop a couple of years ago. So, and it's really similar, but you, have, you do have to make a lot of half square triangles. For these stockings so just kind of another option I'll, I'll link to this as well um, today's is a little bit more simple because you don't have to make any half square triangles and but the method I'm going to use I also wanted to show you it can be really just used on even if you don't want to do some patchwork if you want to make a stocking a different size uh, you can use the method that I'm going to show you today. And then just a couple of fun things before we get started too. For this stocking, it's a little Moda. I think this is the tape that comes on Moda Honey Buns. Uh, such a fun idea for a stocking hanger. And these, I actually noticed that I used the same fabric a couple years ago for this one that I used on my recent stocking. But yeah, the, the stripe looks really cute. You can do a solid. Uh, polka dots are fun. And then also as far as backings, cute polka dot backing for this one, solid red. You'll notice that these aren't quilted, but that I did quilt this with just a cross hatch. So if you want to do that. And then I had uh, my friend quilt the fabric that I used for this stocking. So you really have lots of options. You, you can you don't have to quilt it at all. You can have it your pieces professionally quilted and then cut them out. You can do simple cross hatch or really you you don't have to do any quilting at all. So just a few options and now I'm going to kind of walk you through the tutorial for today's stocking. Okay, first I have a template that you can download. You can go to my blog. We'll have a link in the description for that. So you'll need to go download that template. I just cut my patchwork squares out of some leftover jelly roll strips. This is from the Vintage Holiday Collection by Bonnie and Camille from Moda. This is actually kind of old. I've had it. This jelly roll, I'm getting down to the last of it, but I've used it for different Christmas patchwork projects. So what you will need for today's stocking is either a rectangle or, you know, kind of a goofy shape like I did to cut out your stocking front. You will need your stocking back and you can quilt it or not quilt it. Um, if you are using batting, I used batting for just like this because I had both of these quilted before I started. But if you want to use fusible fleece, you will just need to cut out two pieces of fusible fleece one for your stocking front and one for your stocking back. And then you also need to cut out a stocking front and a stocking back out of lining. And we will pop this up on the screen. You will also need some fabric for your cuff. And we'll also put that up on the screen where you're going to be cutting out a rectangle. And I'm using this little kind of tone on tone dot fabric for my cuff. And then the stocking hanger that I mentioned earlier, you're just going to need a little piece of fabric for that. And we will put all of that up on the screen and you can stop the video if you want and get everything cut and ready to go. 
and come back and I'll show you your next step. One more thing that you might want to use is some freezer paper. You don't have to have it, you can just use the template that you download, but I really like using freezer paper and I'll show you why as we go along and make our stocking. Okay, I did just want to show you, you know, I know I, I mentioned that I used batting and a backing and, and quilted my stocking back and my stocking front, but I did just want to pull out this fusible fleece and show it to you. It actually is kind of like a batting on one side. On the, on the inside, it has a fusible section, so be sure that you don't touch this fusible section to your iron, but what you can do is you can use the template and you can cut out your pieces with fusible fleece. That's what I did with these stockings. If you're, if you're not gonna quilt it, or even if you're gonna do just maybe something simple on your machine, fusible fleece is a good option for these stockings. Now I will show you that this stocking is a little, has a little more body, I think, with the batting than with the fusible fleece. But I mean, once this is hanging up and it's got some fun things inside of it, it's gonna be just as cute. So the fusible fleece is a good option, especially if you don't wanna take the time uh, to have anything quilted before you put your stocking together. Okay, I, first I wanna just talk a little bit more about the freezer paper. I traced my pattern from the template onto the, just the paper side of the freezer paper. You'll notice the other side is kind of shiny and waxy. So you'll want to do your drawing on the paper side. And another thing I wanna point out is don't ever touch your iron to this side because you can really hurt your iron. But I, I traced my template and what I like to do is just take some scissors for paper and cut it out exactly on the line that I've traced. There's a lot of forgiveness when you're working with stockings. Uh, they're quilted usually, or they at least have the fusible fleece. And so your edges don't have to be perfect. But I'll do as well as I can. Okay, and one of the reasons why I love the freezer paper template is because it's going to adhere to my fabric. I'm going to take it over to the ironing board and I'm just going to iron this and I'll bring it back and you'll see that it will just kind of stick to my base and then I can cut it out. I don't have to use pins. I don't have to use wonder clips. I don't have to do anything like that at all. And I'm also going to do the same thing. I'm going to just lay it out on my backing fabric. You can just reuse this as many times as you need to. I'm going to lay it out on my backing fabric and I'm going to also cut out one of those. Now with this, you'll want to be sure that you have it going the right way. So I use my freezer paper template and I cut out my stocking lining. You'll need two pieces for that. It's easiest if you just cut it with the fabric wrong sides together so that you have them reversed if it matters. Mine doesn't really matter because it's just a plain white fabric, but if you're using something that has a right side and a wrong side, make sure that you cut a stocking and a stocking reverse. I, I also use the freezer paper template, just the same template. It, you can reuse it over and over again. And I cut out my stocking back. And you'll notice, as I mentioned before, it's going to be a mirror image of my stocking front so that when I put them together, uh, we'll have the right sides going the right way on the front and the back. So I cut that out. I'm just going to quickly show you just a little bit. See, it just kind of, you can peel it, but that freezer paper just really adheres nicely. And I'm, now I'm going to just go ahead and cut this one out. I'm, I'm using my fabric scissors because it goes through the fabric so much easier. Um, so I'm trying not to get it onto the paper. But you could also arrange your squares. Uh, I wanted mine to be on point. You could arrange them just in a straight setting as well and you wouldn't have to use quite as much fabric, I feel like, because I'm getting, 
you know, these edges are all just getting cut off. Okay. Uh, and then that just tears right off. And so now we've got our stocking front and our stocking back. Those are quilted, ready to go. We've got our stocking lining and stocking lining back. And then I'm gonna go ahead and cut my stocking hanger. For the parts that need to be measured, we will put those measurements up on the screen. Uh, but I always use a two and a half inch by five inch rectangle for my stocking hanger. Okay, the other piece that you'll need is the stocking cuff and I will put that measurement up on the screen for you. It's just going to be a rectangle that you'll use for that. And again, I'll put that measurement up on the screen. Okay, now we are ready to start some actual sewing. And the first thing we're gonna do is make the stocking cuff. And it's hard to see on the video, but mine really does have a right side and a wrong side. And you're gonna put this right sides together along the shorter side. So this is my longer side, this is my shorter side. So we're gonna put that right sides together along that shorter side, and we're going to sew a one quarter inch seam. And then we're going to press the seam open and turn our cuff, and I'll come back and do that. I sewed the stocking cuff together on the short side. I press that seam open, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna turn it with the right side out. And you're gonna line up your, your seam that's been pressed. And then just kind of work it around. Just kind of, the most important part with this is just to have those raw edges together up at the top. And I will take that over to the sewing machine and I will just give that a press. Uh, the other thing I did over there was I mentioned the stocking hanger. So what you do is uh, it's a two and a half inch by five inch rectangle and you first press it in half and then you press each edge in and then you press it in half again and you just sew a little seam right there. And these edges are both gonna be raw and that's fine because they're gonna get enclosed in the stocking. So we've got our cuff and our hanger and now it's time to sew our lining together. You're just gonna sew the right sides together if yours has a, a right and a wrong side. So you would have the right side of the fabric in here and we're just gonna sew all the way around the stocking and back up and uh, you might wanna back stitch at the starting and the stopping. Okay, and then when you sew the stocking front to the stocking back, you're actually gonna put those right sides together. Okay, and then you're gonna sew, just like with the lining, you're gonna sew all the way around. So the stocking and the stocking back will go right sides together. Okay, I'm back from the sewing machine and the stocking lining is all sewn together and it's just gonna stay like this. I also uh, pressed the stocking cuff, so it's just got a nice, a nice press. I also sewed the stocking front and back together, and what you just wanna do is you wanna look on both sides and make sure that everything is enclosed in your seam allowance. Now, I usually trim a little bit on the stocking just so because it's been quilted and it's a little bit bulky I'll trim it a little bit just to make those curves a little bit less bulky when we turn them and I did do a quarter inch seam allowance so I'm just kind of trimming it down to about an eighth of an inch Okay, and then it's time to turn this right side out. And you're just gonna kinda pull it right side out. 
sometimes when you're working on like if you're making smaller stockings this can be a bit more of a chore and then I like to just kind of push along the seam with my fingers and just really get that to where it is everything's coming out poke the toe out and then I'm going to actually take this over to the ironing board and just kind of give it a nice little press make sure that all my edges are pulled out as much as they can be and then I'm, I'm just going to press this before we go any further okay and this is the fun part we're going to be putting it all together you're going to stick the lining exactly how it is into the stocking and you're going to notice that that way the finished seam will be on the inside of your stocking and the raw edges will be matched up with the raw edges of the stocking front and back so you're just going to kind of put that lining in and at this point, I always line up my two seam allowances. And I'm just using these large wonder clips to kind of hold it together. I, did, I didn't mention earlier, but you can use those wonder clips when you're sewing the stocking front and back together too. Mine was kind of sticking together pretty well, uh, so I didn't actually use anything. But if you're having a trouble with it shifting, you can use the wonder clips and it'll keep everything together and so much easier than pins when you're working on a project like this. And these, these are the large, they, they just, when you're working with something pretty bulky, it's helpful to use the larger clips. And I just kind of keep working it around until everything lines up. Okay, so I've got the lining and the stocking clipped together. The next thing we're gonna do is add our stocking hanger. And at this point, I'm gonna fold it in half and the raw edges are gonna be together and we're gonna put them at the back of the stocking on the inside. And I just put it right over where the seams are. I just kind of center those seams on my stocking hanger. And so I know this seems kind of weird, but it's inside the stocking and then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to add the cuff and we're going to do the same thing we're going to put it inside the stocking and we're going to line up the raw edges and we're going to just kind of I just take these clips off and I just reclip it with the cuff in there now so I'm going to center that back seam on the cuff over the little stocking tab so just want to see I don't know if can the camera pick this up we've got the stocking the stocking lining the tab that's folded in half and the raw edges of the cuff and so I always do that side first and then I go over and I I find the seam oh right here and I can tell where my stocking had been pressed in where my cuff had been pressed in half and I just kind of line that up on the seam. And then after that, it's just going back through and kind of taking the clips out and working the cuff in so that all those raw edges are together at the top. And so I, I do always do the front first, and then I go back and I just start clipping And you, you want to make sure that all of the raw edges are kind of together here so that everything will get caught in this seam that you're going to sew. Okay, so I've got it all clipped. Uh, my stocking front and back, the lining, the stocking hanger, and the cuff, and everything's inside. And so now I'm just going to go to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew a one quarter inch seam just all the way around the top and back stitch and uh, come back and, and show you the last final easy step. 
I'm back from the sewing machine. I just wanted to mention one thing I noticed when I was over there. I did use these larger Clover Wonder Clips because mine seemed to be kind of thick. But if you're using the fusible fleece or if you can, the smaller ones, I actually kind of tested it out. They will also work and they might actually even be easier manipulating over at your sewing machine. So just don't get the small Clover, the, the, the miniature sized Wonder Clips. But uh, yeah, you should also be able to use just the regular size as well. Okay, and I sewed all the way around and I made sure that I caught everything in my seam. And so now we are just going to turn the cuff. It, this is really fun. Just pull it up, flip it on top of the stocking. And I just kind of go around, double check my seam all the way around. I am going to take this over to the iron and press it. And you can kind of use the stocking tab to pull it out. Yeah, and I will take this over to the iron and come back and we'll be all finished up. Okay, so there we have it. We've got our stocking and it's all finished. It has a, a fun little tab. These are just really great, as I mentioned earlier. You can use it this technique with any size of stocking that you want to make. Uh, the pieces are a little bit more difficult to work with when you're working with a really small stocking, but it it's the same technique. So I hope you'll enjoy making some of these patchwork stockings for Christmas. Okay, so that's it for our Christmas stocking tutorial. Remember that you will need to go to the blog to get the PDF pattern for the stocking template. Uh, you'll be able to just download that for free. And I hope that you'll enjoy making one or several of these stockings. If you enjoyed today's video, please share it with a friend. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't already and hit the like button. Thanks so much for stopping by.